Hello, Fred. Good morning. Fred's well. How you yep. Yeah, I'm well. Kathy's, well. Uh, Kathy's okay. Not well, is she? No, she's all right. Frank's good. Frank's good. Have you been to Jesus? Do you want to open in a word of prayer? Or? Yeah, I think we should. My turn. Yeah, can, My turn. turn. Won't be as elegant as yours, but I'll do it. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you so much for your power, for your blood. And we're here this morning to worship you, Lord, the best we know how, Lord, because you are our creator and we love you. And this is your time, this is our time to express and to worship and to remember you and for what you are doing for us during these trying times. We, we give you thanks, praise, and we worship you here this morning. We Amen. give you glory. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Phil, for that eloquent prayer. Mm. Have you been to Jesus? Have you been to Jesus for your cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in your grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Saviour's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white, pure and white in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? clean thank you lord man white thank snow. You, amen God. thank you jesus thank you lord for what you have done mm. the garment of praise yeah garments and washed in the blood they're all blue. going well today these songs fred's picked With the spirit and with understanding, oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, you born in Zion, I have authority to appoint unto you in Zion all of joy that will set you free. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Amen. Praise with the Spirit and with understanding. Oh, magnify the Lord. Lift up your hands that hang down. Lift up your voice now still. Give unto God continuous praise. Sing from from Zion's hill. Spirit and with understanding, oh, magnify the Lord. Sing to Yahweh, hallelujah. 
hallelujah, worship and praise thou God. Praise and adore him, bow down before him, oh magnify the Lord. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, lift up your voice to God. Praise with the spirit and with understanding, oh magnify the Lord. Amen. Such a toe tapper. I love that it's, one. Look, you can't help it. It's Fantastic. just it's got it. It's got it. And great words, very appropriate for the Christian. Very you, appropriate. Lift up your voice to God. Yeah. Praise with the Spirit and with understanding. Oh, magnify the Lord. Garment of praise. Oh, Amen. Spirit Why we're here this morning to give you a heavenly Father praise, mm. to give him glory, to give him honour and to give him thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, you're awesome. Yes, you, you are, are awesome. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And better still, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for each and every one of us. We focus on you, Jesus. Amen. There is a redeemer. It's all about Jesus, Bradley. 100%. It's not about me. That's right. All you. Yep. Focus off us and on him. There is a redeemer, Jesus, God's own son. Precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Second verse. Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names. Precious Lamb of God, Messiah. just thank you that you gave us your one and only son jesus christ that he died for each and every one of us here this morning each and every one of us who are here watching this morning if it wasn't for you father god to, to bring your son jesus christ into this world to be to be flesh and to, to be you in flesh father god if you, god if you hadn't have sent your son jesus christ to the cross if he wasn't nailed to that cross if he wasn't, he wasn't pierced father god then lord where would we be We'd be hopeless. We'd be like the world is today. We'd be confused. We'd be frustrated and we'd be angry with the things that are going on in this world. But luckily, we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Saviour and we can place all of our trust yep. in him. We pull through, mate. Amen. Through, Doesn't mean life's going to be perfect. No. But with Jesus, you know you've got a backstop. You know you can always trust him and always go to him with any of the issues or problems you may have. Treat him like your best mate, yeah. my best mate standing here. Yeah. Just chat to I him mean, like bro. you would. Just chatter away and he listens and uh, you find that change happens. It does. Attitude changes. It takes time, it's but just, it happens. Yeah. It's when we're prepared to give up ourself and say, Lord, 
You're the only one. You're the only thing in my life. That is when change will take place. Amen to that, mate. Now. Be still. Be still and know. Before we sing Be Still and Know, um, I think Frank's doing communion, isn't he? So yeah. we might just encourage everyone to go and grab a, a piece of bread and a piece of juice for communion. So yeah. Be Still and Know. This is one of your favourites, this one, isn't it? Oh, it's a bit small for me. I like bigger songs. But that, no, it's lovely. I'm not picking on it. going to ask Frank to lead us in communion. Thanks, well, Frank. good morning, Southside. It's time for communion. A time when we draw close to Jesus Christ. A time of remembering how much he did for us, how much it cost him. A time when we can literally lay a hold of him through the communion elements, through the juice, through the bread. A time when we can put down the burdens that we've been carrying through the week and take up the gentle, joyful presence of Jesus Christ. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And I pray this morning that as we come around this communion, that's exactly what you will do. There is so much stress at the moment, so many pressures upon us, so many things that we are being made to comply with, made to do, things that overwhelm us. And I think all of you, in one way or another, at one point or another, will have experienced that overwhelming sense of, this is crushing me, I can't go any further. Jesus himself experienced that right before the crucifixion, when he went into the Garden of Gethsemane, and he cried out, my God, my God, take this cup from me. But if it's not your will, then I will do what is your will. Because things aren't going easy, because it's difficult, doesn't mean you're not in the will of God. The moment the church is coming in, particularly in the state of Victoria, is coming under enormous, intensified attack from our state government. We are coming under pressure, making it harder and harder and harder to have fellowship and worship together. The Christian schools are coming under attack. In, they're now facing a legislation that will require that they do not have the right to choose Christian teachers to teach in the Christian schools. Christianity has never been in a more precarious position than it is right now. And that is overwhelming to many of us. Even at Southside, we are 
desperately looking at our options and ways that we can continue to minister and to bring Christ's love. Yes, I am burdened and I am weary and I am sure that you are burdened and you are weary because that's being done to us from outside. But this morning, as you hold in your hands the little piece of bread that speaks to you of the body of Jesus Christ that was cruelly broken on the cross that you might be made whole. And you hold the cup of juice that reminds you of the blood of Jesus Christ that flowed that you might be cleansed. Remember the greatest burden by far that has ever been carried on any human shoulders ever on planet Earth was Jesus' burden as he won for us salvation and freedom and liberty. And as you partake of this this morning, remember the words of Jesus Christ. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Roll the burden onto him. You can't change what's happening with wishful thinking. You can't change what's happening with worry. I honestly don't think you can even change what is happening with protests in the street. If you want to change what's happening to us, there are only two things you can do. You can come to Jesus Christ and you can lay the burden onto his shoulders. How do we do that? We do that in prayer. We ask God to intervene, to stop what's being done. That's more effective than 10,000 protests. That is more effective than 100,000 worrying thoughts. No point losing sleep about it. We have to roll the burden onto Christ. You might have other burdens. You might have illness. Roll the burden onto Jesus Christ. Remember he said, I am the God who heals you. And ask for that healing. And refuse to accept the sickness or the injury that might be in your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stand against this sickness, this injury, this illness. You have that legal right because Jesus has authority over sickness as well as sin and he gives that to his, his children. So as you partake of the bread this morning, if your burden is physical, lay that at his feet and stand on it yourself. I will not accept you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you go from my body. All pain, go. Infirmity, go. Whatever it may be. If it's people around you, I remember Jesus said we are to love as he loved. There are some exceedingly unlov unlovable people around. Some people who we find it so difficult to accept them and what they do. Well, we don't have to accept what they do. We don't have to accept what the government is doing. It's ridiculous for anyone to say that a Christian should accept what is going on at the moment. But we can still pray for the people that their eyes will be opened. We can still pray for the people that they will see what they are doing. We can still pray for the people that Christ will reach them. We have to over override the anger, the resentment, the dislike, the distrust that might rise in us and pray for them, not accepting what they do, but praying that they will turn and begin to do better things in Christ. Roll the burden onto Jesus. You can't change them. He can. As you drink of the wine this morning, remember your own life is far from perfect. You are not sin free, neither am I. I wasn't when the Lord saved me and there have been plenty of times along the way when I have dropped my bundle and done or said something I shouldn't have. Jesus promises in 1 John 1, 7, 8 and 9 that if we confess our sin to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. Roll the burden of sin away again and accept the forgiveness and cleansing of Christ and stand to your feet and go forward as you partake of the drink this morning. 
there's anything in your life that you know God has been challenging you about or you've been challenging yourself about because you are aware that you've done or said the wrong thing, roll it over to him. If there's healing as you partake of the bread, roll it over to him. In all of your life this morning, repent of the sin of worry. Sin of worry? Yes, because Jesus said, do not worry. So if I do what he said I should not do, what does that make my action? Have you thought that through? Do not worry. Let Jesus take the burden. Spend your time talking to Christ in prayer and listening for his answer rather than wasting your time in worry. This morning as we partake of these elements, be healed, be forgiven and released in his glory. Father, we recall all that Jesus did for us and we lay it all down. We lay it all down, the things in our lives that we have been reluctant to release. We lay it down. The things we've been worried about, we lay them down. The people that have concerned us, we lay them down. Our own sin, we lay it down. We roll it over onto your shoulders, Lord, because you have said you will carry it. Your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Thank you for your yoke. Renew it this morning upon my shoulders and upon those who are participating in this communion. And as we partake of this bread, heal us, I pray, Lord. As we partake of this cup, forgive us and cleanse us, O Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Let's eat and drink, remembering our Lord's death until he comes, for coming he certainly is. Thank you, Father, for your healing power that's flowing. To those listening this morning, to those with physical needs in their body, thank you that as they partake of this bread, they will also partake of the life of Christ and be healed because you conquered sickness. Thank you, Jesus, for those in Southside, even those who aren't even hearing this, that your extended hand would be upon them and they would be healed and lifted this morning. Thank you for those who we know, our friends and family, who may be away from you. We can lift them up to you, Father, this morning and pray that they be healed and liberated. In Jesus' name, there are so many. And let's take the cup together and joyfully giving thanks, embrace Christ. If you have anything that you need to apologize to him about, take a moment to do it. Roll the burden off. Stop carrying it, because as long as you carry it, you'll be defeated by it. Roll it to him. You'll be in victory over it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your forgiveness. Thank you for all you've done and all you're doing. We surrender and submit to you, Lord, and we give praise unto you. Our oh, Father, bless these people. Bless them with the encouragement that comes of your presence. Bless them with hearing ears. Bless them with seeing eyes. Bless them with hands that reach out to touch those around them with the love of Jesus Christ. Bless them and anoint them, Father, to be able to thrive in these times of pressure and turmoil. Bless them not to be blinded, but to be wide open to what's going on around them. Bless them not to be subservient, but to be over the top of the things that are binding them up and pulling them down. Bless these dear people, I pray, Father, one and all, with the liberty that comes in Jesus Christ to be content, to be determined, to be free. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We have one more song, and then Pastor Brad will be along with a great message for you this morning. Thank you for being part of our service today. Bye-bye. Well, Frank, thank you for that communion. That, wasn't he good? That, that was terrible. Well, we're joking. Oh, no, no, we're no, joking. No, he told was, us to say that, actually, because we say never, every week. He no, has no. never done a dud No, yet, he's never done Frank, a dud. Or Kathy. No. No, of Rob. No. Wonderful. Wonderful thank preachers. It's always a first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frank's saying there's always a first time. We're still waiting, time. Frank. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> thank you, Frank, once thank again you. for your message. Bless you. It is well with my soul. Like a river, a 
soul well oh, mine is mine is yeah, it's going well oh, not bad for an old guy no you're doing well for what are you now 70 Shh, stop it thank you guys for joining us thank you phil Hello. thank you fred thank thanks, you fred. kathy thanks kathy thank fred. you fred. good morning church thank you so much for joining us once again thank you for the worship and thank you frank for your communion i just want to open with a word of prayer thank you mighty god thank you lord Lord, I just thank you that the words that you have given me, Father God, are words that you want spoken. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, lead me into all of your truth. Lord, I just pray that what I'm about to, to say, Father God, is something that can penetrate the heart and the minds of someone that needs to hear this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have you ever reached a place in your life where you're at? A crossroads where you don't know whether or not you should turn left or you should turn right or if you should go straight ahead or even go backwards or 
Stand still. Stand where you are and, and do nothing. Church, we're currently living in a world where I feel like as individuals and a church, we are at a crossroads. I feel like we're in the, the busy streets of, of Melbourne with, with traffic all around us. As we stand in the middle of that crossroad, there's the noise of the traffic. There's the noise of people coming at us. And we have a choice. What do we do? Do I do nothing? Do I turn right? Do I turn left? Or do I stay where I am? Do I continue to try and move straight ahead in hope that God is directing me? Have you ever noticed that when you're at a crossroads in your life that you can feel hopeless, unsure, concerned? You can feel the pressure of the world on you. And at times, you are so desperate to go the right way in haste without God's leading. Well, I want to tell you this morning that there is hope. There is hope in Jesus Christ. There is hope through his word. There is hope through his Holy Spirit. No matter where you are, God knows your situation. And his word says in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, as you can see behind me, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And it goes on to say, Lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways. Allow him to make your paths straight. Also in Philippians 4, 6-7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, praise you God, will guard your heart, and your minds in Christ. Have you noticed that we need to let your requests be made known to God? You know, we need to allow the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, to guide us. We need to lean not on our own understanding, our own thinking, our own thoughts, our own fleshly desires, but in all that we do, we need to acknowledge him as Lord of our life and our paths will be made straight, church. This morning, I'd like to look at Jeremiah 6, 16, which I believe has some excellent advice and keys for when we reach a crossroad in our life. You know, there are decisions being made every day by ourselves or by others that affect us. And we can frequently find ourselves in a crossroad, not knowing what to do, needing guidance and wisdom in making godly decisions. So in Jeremiah 6, 16, it says, This is what the Lord says, Stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths Ask where the, where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. Now, before we look at this scripture, I just want to give you a little bit of context. You know, Jeremiah here is dealing with an unfaithful Israel. He's dealing with God's chosen people who have gone astray, who have turned their backs on God to worship other gods and even one another. You know, this message of Jeremiah 6.16 is given in the context of strong accusations and warnings from God through the prophet Jeremiah because of the unfaithfulness of God's people. Prior to Jeremiah 6.6, 6, we you know, flip back a few pages, we read the words of God through the prophet of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 1.16, it says, I will pronounce my judgment on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods, and in worshipping what their hands have made. In Jeremiah 2.13, it says, My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and they have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. 
The last one in Jeremiah 3.14, it says, or God says, Return, faithless people, declares the Lord. For I am your husband. I will choose one from a town and two from a clan and bring you to Zion. Amen. So God is saying in this context of calling, his, he is wanting to call his rebellious people back to himself. And I hear you say, is this the type of people who are, who are hearing the message of, of Jeremiah today? You know, are we the intended audience for this message? Today, most of us watching represent a people who have already returned back to God in relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. You know, we probably don't need to hear this scathing message that we hear in Jeremiah because of the grace shown to us by God and by Jesus Christ through his death and his resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. However, In Jeremiah 6.16, there are some excellent advice and keys that we can take, take out of this scripture. You know, regardless of where we may be in our relationship with God, when confronted with a crossroad in our life. Let me just read Jeremiah 6.16 again. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. Notice that within this verse, there are three really, really good keys that we can take out of this when confronted with a crossroad in our life. Now, the first key here is to stand and look. The second is to ask and walk. And the third key is to rest or refuse. Key one, stand and look. In a moment of decision, it is important to stop and give careful consideration. The problem that we constantly face today is that we've become a culture of, of haste, a culture of rusting, uh, uh, of rushing. You know, we, we live on our phones, we live on Facebook, we live on Messenger, we're constantly emailing, we're constantly telegramming, we're constantly YouTubing. You know, we're watching so much media and we struggle to understand why. Why don't we know truth? Because we're all seeking the truth. You know, we stuff so much into our, our diaries, our, our calendars, you know, more and more things that we've just got to get done in the day. We race from one end of life to another. You know, technology and media and a desire to do more and to do better and to do it yesterday has turned us into a world that rushes. Guys, we need to stop. And we need to smell the roses. But unfortunately, instead, when we wake up in the morning, you know, we, we grab our coffee, we commence our day, and the first thing we think about is, is Jesus. No, the first thing we think about is, what have I got to get done today? There's all this stuff at work that I, that I have to do. You know, and instead of stopping for a moment, you know, smelling that sweet, sweet smell of our coffee or our tea in the morning, what we need to be doing is to be praying to the one who has already done it through the completed and the finished work at the cross, who is Jesus. We all talk of, of fixing it. We all talk that we're going to slow down. We're going to release the pressure valve. But we just don't have the time. We are in such a conundrum. We understand that our, that our sight is limited and flawed and we must depend upon the guidance of God who sees it all. We need to trust in Christ for the ultimate directions of our life. In Matthew 7, 13 to 14, Jesus himself tells us, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. 
and many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. We need to stand strong in our faith. We need to look to God for our direction and our guidance. We need to stop and smell the roses because the moment we stop and smell that rose, guess what? The rest of the world is switched off. And in that moment, we may hear the small, quiet voice of God who has always been speaking to us. We need to take a breath and look to God for direction in life because he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Now, point two in this is that we need to ask and walk. Now, this one is difficult, uh, I think, for most of us blokes. I know myself, I struggle to ask. I struggle to ask for help because I'm headstrong, you know. If someone says to me, hey, can I give you a hand with this? My normal response is, no, mate, it's all good. I'm okay, I've got it sorted. Does it sound familiar? You know, I don't need a hand, mate. I am definitely got this under control. And the problem is I never have it under control. And usually what happens is I eventually have to ask someone for help, but it's usually not until the, the thing I'm working on is completely broken or, or to a point where I go, I can't fix this. I can't fix this in my own stubbornness, you know, do we then need to humble ourselves before fellow man and actually ask for help? We shouldn't have to wait until the pressure of life is, is so much that, that life seems impossible before we, before we come before God and ask him for help. You know, we all want peace and joy and patience and self-control in our lives. Well, I want to tell you this morning that we can have all of those things in our life if we are prepared to spend time with God, letting him know that we do not want to do it in our own strength because our own strength, it's limited and eventually the tank is gonna run out. We need to stop and smell the roses. It begins with a constant relationship with Jesus Christ. Without that, there is nothing. It is Christ who lives in me. It is Christ who lives in you. It is the Holy Spirit indwelt in us who brings that lasting peace and joy and self-control. When we ask God, we need to be asking from a position of surrender and obedience. Knowing the answer may not come in our timing, but it will in James 5, 7 to 8, it says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crops, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. Verse 8, You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. We need to be patient. And we need to stand firm in our faith. Just like the farmer, we need to patiently wait for the autumn and the spring rains, knowing that the crop will bear fruit in God's timing because it is his will. When we ask, we don't need to be, to be asking and then running ahead of God in hope that we will receive it earlier or hope we receive it you know, for what we've asked for, it, 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 out of you know, rushing ahead and doing more for God. There's nothing more that we can do. There's nothing more that we can add to our salvation. No, we just need to stop and ask God. We need to be patient, trusting God has heard our requests. When we ask, we will receive it if it is the will of God for our lives. And once we ask, we need to be prepared to walk. You know, as a young fella, you probably can't tell now, but I used to do a lot of, a lot of running and a lot of exercise. So as a, an athlete, I had to train. I had to be 
prepared. I had to get ready for the race. And it's no different to us. We, we need to be ready. We need to train ourselves in the ways of God. We need to be spiritually, mentally, and physically prepared for when God answers our request so that we can walk it out with him. Amen. You know, we need to walk in the truth and the revelation God has given us. God's truth may not be our truth, but it is the truth. When we ask, we need to be prepared to walk where he asks us to walk. Now, church, we need to get ready because God has called us to walk in unity. And he's called us to walk in unity in a world that does not agree with what we believe. We live in a world that has created its own doctrine. And it's a doctrine called New Age. I am my own God. It is all about me and how I feel and what I want. And if you get in my way, I will do anything to shut you down, to ensure what you believe is cancelled because it doesn't fit with my New Age doctrine, which is all about me. When we stand at the crossroads, we're called to consider the old paths, the ones prescribed of old by God. For those who take the good way, the right way, the truthful way, the path of God, the path that has stood the test of time and generations for Christians, the way walked by those who have been faithful through the years, there is a promise of rest. In Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, it says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And yes, we will have rest. At the end, there will be complete and eternal rest. But there is a piece of it that applies to our daily walk today. At the end of this scripture, Jeremiah's message ends with this terrible statement. We will not walk in it. Can there be any greater rebellion than this? To know the way and the truth and refuse to walk in it with God. Today we are at a crossroads, but it's a cross, the cross of Calvary, road. It is a road that was built on the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is a road of victory already won for us. It is a road of love, a road of acceptance, a road of peace, and a road of direction if we are prepared to confess Jesus as Lord of our life and put him behind the wheel to direct our paths. You know, in Jesus' time, many people came to him. They came to him for food. They came to him so they could see signs and wonders. They came to him so that they could be healed of their sicknesses. But remember this, Jesus himself never submitted to their feelings. He never submitted to their felt needs, to their curiosities. Instead, he said to them, take up your cross, take up the cross and follow me. And it is a cross road we are asked to walk. You know, it's a cross road. It is a cross that Jesus Christ died on that we are to pick up and walk in that daily church. In Matthew 16, 24 to 25, it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life 
will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. Amen. So church, I just want to say to you this morning, if you are at a crossroad in your life, just stop and rest and change your focus back onto the important thing. And that important thing is Jesus Christ. Take a moment to sit quietly somewhere, smell the roses, open your Bible, read the word of God. Allow God to speak to your heart, to speak to your spirit. Because even though we are faced with a crossroad or crossroads in our lives, Jesus is the answer. He has always been the answer and he will always be the answer. So church, thank you. Thank you for listening. And I just pray that hopefully next week we can once again be in person meeting, which would be fantastic and having fellowship together. So why don't we just close in a word of prayer? Thank you, mighty God. Lord God, you know everything about us, Lord. You know our comings, you know our goings. Father God, I just pray that as I feel that as a church and as individuals that we are, we are coming to a crossroad in our life, Father God, that, that we don't turn to the world for answers, that we don't need to look left or right or backwards. Lord, that we can look forward knowing that you have all of the answers, that you have gone ahead of us, that you have prepared a way for us, mighty God. Lord, I just pray that if there's anyone here watching or listening this morning that, that may be concerned, that may be anxious about their situation in life, for whatever reason, Lord, I just want to remind them that the word of God says, be anxious for nothing, be anxious for nothing, cast all your cares on him. Almighty oh, God, you are an awesome God that we serve. We love you and we thank you that you are directing us individually. Lord, that you are directing us as a church. Thank you, Lord, and I can't wait to see where you take us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hopefully we'll see you next week in person. God bless. Bye. Bye.